Welcome to my lecture online. Here's a second problem about orbital motion in the very same test. They must like that topic. Well, let's read and see what this question is. Two stars of masses m and 2m at a distance d rotate about their common center of mass in free space. The period of revolution is, and they give us four possible answers. And they did provide a little diagram. We have two masses, one that has 2m, one has m, their distance d apart, and they re revolve or rotate about their common centers. Revolving would be a better word here. All right, so what is the concept here, and what would be the strategy? So the concept is, whenever we have orbital motion or any circular motion, the centripetal force must equal the force that causes that motion to exist. And in this case, it's the force of gravity. So the concept here is that the force of gravity must equal to the centripetal force. And of course, the general equation of the force of gravity is that we have g little m big M over the distance squared is equal to centripetal force would be uh, well, depends upon which mass we're dealing with. Uh, let's do the big mass would be mv squared over r. All right. Now, those may not be the same r's. So let's call it ra and rb. And the reason why they're not the same r's is that this would be the, ratio, the, ra the radius of the circular motion this would be the distance between the two objects causing the uh, gravitational force to exist. All right, so as long as we understand that, I think we're ready to go. Now, think about this. Where is the common center of rotation or rev uh, the revolving motion of the two objects? Well, it turns out that if you have twice the mass, the radius should be only half as big. If you have half the mass, the radius should be twice as big. So the center mass would be about here. This distance, let's call this R1, and this distance, let's call this R2. In this case, R2 must be two times R1. If this, of course, let's call this M1, and let's call this M2. So you can clearly see that if this is twice the mass, it would have half the radius about the point, the common, uh, or the center of mass of the, of the entire system. All right, so knowing that, Let's now come up with an equation based upon the concept here. All right, so we have g times the product of the two masses would be 2m times m divided by the distance between them squared. Now the distance would be d squared. And that equals, now we can take one of the two objects, I'm going to take the big object, and it's going to revolve around this point right here, and the distance would be r1. So in this case, uh, we can say that this would be the mass of the big object, that would be 2m. That's a strange looking 2, let me try this again. 2m, there we go, times the velocity squared, so it would be v squared, divided by the radius of the circular motion, which would be r1, which is one-third d. So one would be one-third d. And then notice that we have a d squared here and a d. We have a 2m on this side and a 2m. That makes things a little bit easier. So now let's clean this up a little bit. So we'll write this as gm over d is equal to v squared. Now 1 third in the denominator becomes 3 on the other side, so we can write the 3 over there. And so now notice that we're looking for the period, not the velocity. So now we need a relationship between the velocity and the period. And we know that the velocity is equal to distance over time. Now the distance going around in a circle is 2 pi times the radius, so would be r1, divided by time, which is the period. And r1, of course, is one-third the distance, so it would be 2 pi distance over 3 times the period. And now, since we have v squared, we need to square both sides, so we have v squared is equal to 4 pi pi d squared over 9 times the period, and that can be replaced over here, so we can write this as 4 pi squared, because I'm squaring this, 4 pi squared, d squared divided by 9 times the period. Okay, so now what I need to do is, of course, 
solve that for t. So the t goes up here, the period is equal to, oh, wait a minute, t squared. I forgot to square the period. So there we go. I need to square the period as well. Be careful about the algebra. So now we have t squared is equal to, here we have 4 pi squared, d squared, but the d over here makes that d cubed, divided by, notice we have a 3 in the numerator, like this, and a 9 in the denominator, and we have g times m in the denominator, so I'll bring this down, bring this up, and the d goes, becomes d cubed. All right, I think we're good to go. And now we have a 3 in the numerator and a 9 in the denominator. And so finally, when I come here and I take the square root of both sides, I get the period is equal to the square root of 4 pi squared is 2 pi times the square root of, we have a d cubed in the numerator, and in the denominator we have a 3 times g times m. And that is the period of the large object, which of course would also be the period of the small object. We could have gone and chosen a small object to work with. You get the same results. Now let's see here which answer is the correct one. And it looks like it's the one on the top. A is the correct answer. And that is how it's done. So I changed the way you write your G's. That's a little line down. Oh, you mean at the very top? I mean, next to the bottom right, to the line down. Like this? I, I don't know what. Uh, very outside right. Okay. And then very right side, no, bottom, bottom. Right. The very right of the letter, there's a little horizontal. Go to the very right of the horizontal, put the line straight down. There. Straight down more, not a little tiny line. There, G. That's now how I learned how to write G's. <laughs> you will never get confused with a little like a six. Sometimes I think, is it like this? No. The reason, okay, the difference between a six and a G was that this is curled and that's straight. Yeah, but when and it's not closed and this is supposed to be closed. Yeah, when you're really fast, what I want. So that looks like a G. That might make a little bit of difference, yeah. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> well, any viewer that has a suggestion how to write a G, let me know and we'll give it a try. But it's, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, you know that. And I'm an old dog. <laughs>